Now let's talk about diagramming complex sentences. A complex sentence is made up of one independent clause and one dependent clause. An independent clause has a subject and a predicate and could stand by itself as a complete sentence. A dependent clause has a subject and a predicate, but will always have or always begin with a subordinating conjunction. Subordinating conjunctions perform two tasks. First, subordinating conjunctions provide a necessary transition between two clauses, and second, they make one of the clauses subordinate to, dependent upon, or less important than the other clause. Here's a short list of subordinating conjunctions. There are many more. Let's take a look at a sentence. After they finished lunch, they visited the historic battlefield. There are two clauses here. The first one, the dependent or subordinate one, is after they finished lunch, which begins with a subordinating conjunction after. The second clause, they visited the historic battlefield. That's a independent clause and could stand by itself as a sentence. Let's go ahead and code it. The main verb in the independent clause is visited. And the main verb in the subordinate clause is finished. The subject in the independent clause is they. They visited. And there's a direct object here. They visited what? They visited the battlefield, which is a place. The subject in the subordinate clause is they. They finished, and they have a direct object also. They finished what? They finished lunch. Now there's a modifier, an adjective modifying the noun battlefield. And our subordinating conjunction is after which ties the two clauses together. Now, to diagram this, we know we have two clauses, so we're going to need two baselines and two bisecting lines. And since we have two direct objects, we're going to have two vertical lines that do not intersect or bisect the baseline. Our subordinating conjunction will tie the two verbs together and in effect make the second clause an adverbial clause, which is telling us when. When did they visit the battlefield? Remember, adverbs tell when, where, why, in what manner, and to what extent. The independent clause always goes on top. The subordinate clause goes underneath it. Our subject in the main clause, the independent clause, is they. The verb in the main clause, or the independent clause, is visited. And visited what? They visited a battlefield, a place. Battlefield has two modifiers. It has an article modifier, the, and it has an adjective, historic. The subject in our second subordinate clause is they. The main verb, the transitive verb, because we have a direct object, is finished. Finished what? They finished lunch. Let's go ahead and put in our article modifier, the. And our adjective, historic, the historic battlefield. And finally, our subordinating conjunction, 
which is the first word in the sentence, so we'll capitalize it. After. Let's try another one. As long as they continue to practice, our team will continue to win. We have two clauses here. One is subordinate, the first one, because it has the subordinating three words, subordinating conjunction, as long as, as long as they continue to practice. Our independent clause is our team will continue to win, which could stand by itself as a sentence. The subordinate clause could not. The verb in our independent clause is actually a two-verb, two-word verb. We have a helping verb, will, which throws everything into the future. Will continue. And our subject in the independent clause is team. The verb in our subordinate clause is continue. And the subject in our subordinate clause is they. And both clauses have direct objects which in this case are infinitives. An infinitive is a verb form which begins with to, but which uh, functions as a noun, in this case, to win in the independent clause and to practice in the subordinate clause are both functioning as direct objects. They're kind of fun to diagram because we get to draw those little platforms. We have one adjective. Which team? Our team. Our is a possessive pronoun, which normally, unless it stands by itself, will be an adjective. And we have a three-word conjunction, subordinating conjunction, as long as, which is kind of like saying if. We'll diagram it. We have two clauses, so we'll have two baselines, and we'll have two bisecting lines, and we'll set up for two direct objects. Let's go ahead and draw the little platforms first, because they're fun. The platforms for the infinitives, which are functioning, which are verb forms functioning as nouns. Our subject in the independent clause is team. By the way, the independent clause always goes on top. The subordinate clause goes underneath it. Team will continue is our verb. Will continue to win. It's the concept of winning. The infinitive. Team is being modified by the word our, our team, the adjective our, our team. The noun in the subordinate clause is they. The verb is continued continue. The verb is continue. And we have another infinitive functioning as a direct object to practice the concept of practicing to practice. Our subordinating conjunction ties the two verbs together, makes the second clause an adverbial clause, modifying We'll continue. As long as is our subordinating conjunction. 